It's the Eagle Television Forum with your host, Gary Shorman. Welcome to the Forum. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shorman this week. The Forum brought to you by Hayes Med. And our guest today, Jerry Michaud, and he is from DSNWK. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this out of the way right away because that's a long uh, DSNWK to say, but it'd be longer to say what it all means, right? Sure, yeah. It's uh, Developmental Services of Northwest Kansas, and uh, the acronym makes it a little less. But if you do voiceover, like uh, voice recognition, it doesn't get it right. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So. Well, let's talk about DSNWK. Since you are the director of DSNWK and you have to oversee this, you have a big coverage area for DSNWK. You serve a lot of people. Yeah, um, we, we serve the 18 counties of Northwest Kansas and uh, we're in our 51st uh, year of service. Uh, started up from the grassroots and uh, we serve in uh, hub communities throughout the, those 18 counties. Uh, Hayes being uh, where our administrative offices are and really the lion's share of, of services. Well you say you've been around a long time, over 50 years, and there's a lot of people that know who DSNWK is, but my question to you is how did it start? You said grassroots, but, but how did that start and, and uh, what, was, what was the reason in the first early years? Um, well, you know, it started out of uh, interest of community, uh, families in the community who really desired something better for their uh, son, their daughter, their family member. Um, that uh, the alternative service was uh, an institutional a model of support, which we had state institutions throughout Kansas, up Norton and Parsons and KNI and Topeka State and a few of those others. So that was the model of the day. Um, and thanks, thank goodness that uh, you know the community model emerged from that, which really gave people a chance to receive probably the most normal life. Um, in the community we're as close to home as possible. You know, and you, you bring that up, and Steve and I have talked, we, in, from your marketing, we've talked about that a few times, and Steve said it, it's really good that a lot of these people that are getting these services uh, get to stay close to home and stay around home instead of having to go, as you said, institutionalized to some other place that's not even close to their parents or, or, or brothers and sisters. Yeah, we have uh, one of our uh, parents had said, said it this way. She says, my daughter has a life. And having community and engaged, going to the simple things like going to the grocery store, going to church, um, having active involvement, and if work is part of their, their desire, we help them find employment as well and support them in that. I'll bet you as the director have gone through this history thing quite a bit of DSNWK and, and seen a lot of old pictures and, and have seen how it's evolved since. In, in your description of it, would you say that it's changed dramatically some, for, from some of the earlier years or even just in the last 10 years? Well, you know, that's a great, a great question and there's probably a lot of folks a whole lot more qualified mm -hmm. than, than I that can tell that story. Um, but it really started, really is kind of arm wrestling to bring the concept of community services into the public uh, square. And, um, you know, in terms of how we've grown, you know, we, we grew up from, you know, a few families uh, in hub cities. Hayes was one of those, the Homer B. Reed uh, Center that we mm -hmm. operate, the Reed Center down on 13th Street. Um, the family, uh, Homer B. Reed, part of the uh, faculty at Fort Hayes was instrumental in helping us here in the Hayes community. I think we started out in a barracks down on the Fort Hayes campus and then up in our Hill City area, the Kobler family. And then up in Atwood, uh, we had a, a, a family up there, the Beamguard Learning Center, which was kind of the precursor to our Prairie Development Center up there. But it's families wanting to have some options local that uh, really gave their, their son, their daughters, uh, kind of a chance uh, for community life. And a lot of communities don't have this. Uh, even bigger communities don't have the services that DSNWK does provide. Well, across, uh, across Kansas, there are organizations uh, that are kind of similar, if you will, sister organizations that have uh, you know, missions that serve people close to home. And thank goodness in Kansas, when we shifted from the uh, institutional model, um, those services grew up uh, across, across the state and really across the nation uh, in that transformation that uh, when we see the, the history of special ed as an example that came out of those early days and the Kennedy uh, era where disabilities wasn't so much a, 
a hidden term, um, gain more public uh, awareness, and then out of that, you know, some some uh, fascinating growth and development in terms of services. So. And, I, and I see it as, as such a different, it's, a, it's different than it was many years ago, even last 10 years, it's, it's so much different now. You have a lot of, uh, I say, group homes, but they're all, they're, they're um, residential homes in the area. You've got some in Hayes and your other counties in Northwest Kansas. Do you have them in all 18 counties? Well, we have uh, services in hub cities. And, and so in, in terms of having a residential type of model, and I should probably clarify that a residential model, we have some group homes, I think we have 14 across the, the 18 counties, 14 home group homes, group living. Mm -hmm. um, but we also provide services to people in their own home or their own apartment. It just depends on what their level of support need is. If someone has a kind of a 24 uh, hour, seven day a week need for support, it's that model that really allows us to, to be able to meet their needs uh, in the most natural family type situation as well, you we took, can. You took my next question away because that's kind of where I was going to go too. I was going to talk about um, the, the services aren't just in the, these homes. They, they can spread out to being independent living in many, many exactly. cases. And I will go as far as saying that a lot of these people that are, that are getting these services, a lot of them are out there working and have jobs and you help them with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Hayes is a great, Ellis County is a great example. Um, I was looking at some statistics recently and I believe we have like 160 some people uh, of the 550 that we support in Northwest Kansas that are involved in, um, in businesses, in employment situations and like 100 and I want to say 130 businesses throughout Northwest Kansas, which is an amazing testament to two things. A, uh, the individuals we, we serve are just like you and I. Mm -hmm. They want to have fulfillment in their life and employment is a big factor for all of us. Well, um, and it's a big plus for our, our employers who say, you know what, I'm, I'll give this a chance. And they are oftentimes uh, are very pleased that they made such a decision. Yeah, you can see the happiness on their face um, when they do accomplish some yeah, things in life. Exactly. So, exactly. well, I want to talk to you. We're going to take a break. And in, in the next part of the show, what I want to do is talk about um, some of the fundraising goals and some of the fundraising you're doing right now. I know you're in the middle of a campaign right now, capital campaign. We'll talk about that in the second half of the show. How about that? Yeah, very good. All right. Jerry Michaud from DSNWK, the CEO. I want to thank him for joining us today. We'll be back with more right after this from Hayes Med. An INSB original series. Why would these three men want to live their lives by a cowboy code? What we do best is cowboy. Tradition. Dedication. But one reason is bigger than the rest. Family. That's what life's all about. It's a show you don't want to miss. The Cowboy Way. Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern. Only on INSB. Scarlett here, and Eagle Radio of Hayes is sending me back to Branson September 9th through the 12th on a comfy Village Tours bus. See the fall foliage, hit the casino, and catch a roll at Lambert's Cafe. We are scheduled to see these great shows. Samson, The Hay Goods, The Acrobats of Shanghai, Clay Cooper's Music Show, The Branson Bell Cruise and Lunch Show. Singles, couples, join me September 9th through the 12th. All this for only $798. Call me at 301-2211 to reserve your seat now. Get together, have a few laughs. Fire in the hall! Welcome back to the forum brought to you by Hayes Med. I'm Mike Kerner in for Gary Shoreman this week. By the way, if you've got some show ideas or questions, Gary would love to hear from you. It's gary.shoreman at eaglecom.net. 
Uh, with us today is Jerry Michaud, and Jerry is with DSNWK, the CEO, and I uh, want to thank you for coming by today. We talked a little bit in the first half of the show about the services that are provided and how it all started with DSNWK, but it can only go so far if you don't have some money coming in. And I know that uh, you had a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but you've had grants coming in, which help tremendously, don't they? Exactly. No, uh, a lot of folks, actually a lot of folks, a few folks. I said the same thing. I believe <laughs> that, uh, you know, sometimes that uh, they think we're the government. <laughs> and uh, we are a 501c3, which uh, our services are not free. We, we have to be able to continue to operate. And, and it, takes, it takes a lot of resources to do that. And uh, you are, you're exactly right in terms of um, some grants and other aspects uh, that we have to incorporate into our operations to help us to, to kind of make things balance and, and to meet the, the needs. Do you have a staff member that does write grant writing for you? Well, actually, we have a, a team, and it's, uh, it's kind of like uh, everybody has that special hat mm -hmm. that comes out when it's time for a, a grant, and we come together to collectively approach uh, those kinds of opportunities. Um, so it's always nice to get a really big one, and you had one recently from the uh, Dane G. Hansen Foundation, yeah. and they've been really good with, with so many uh, other organizations in the communities that they serve or that are in this area, but Dane G. Hansen was, uh, was kind enough to give you guys a grant. Oh yeah, we, we are so appreciative of the long-standing uh, relationship that we've had uh, with the foundation. They, they've just been uh, um, amazing in supporting uh, the work that we do, the fact that our footprint, their footprint is uh, very similar and um, I believe they have a, a heart for the work that we do and uh, you're right, the recent uh, grant that we received uh, through the Danger Hansen Foundation and some other uh, local foundation here uh, was, uh, was a, a great thing for for, do you do you apply for grants all over the state wherever you can you can seem to find them? Yes, uh, we we reach out based on first what is what is our need, um, and there are a lot of needs in a, in the community system that do not have a, associated resources to to cover them, um, and so it's in those situations that we we reach out to foundations. Different foundations have different focus areas. Mm -hmm. And so we, uh, we try to align what is our, our need with uh, what foundations could potentially help us with that. Yeah, I could see that uh, there are a lot of different needs for, for services you provide because you're providing not only uh, some homes, but sometimes help with food, sometimes help with finding jobs. You have people that have to work with them too, uh, the, the people that you serve, and, and, and it all just takes money. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, there's uh, there's always a need for <laughs> for support. So, so if people if, if people want to support you, they, they can. Not only do the grants help out, but uh, there there's so many services that you have to provide that uh, any any money would help out. Um, if people want to, they can donate, and there's tax credits for that. Um, well, uh, in terms of a donation as a 501c3, people have the ability to kind of. Um, gain uh, you know, a tax mm -hmm. uh, benefit for a charitable contribution. Uh, but in terms of tax credit, that mm -hmm. happens to be one of those other areas where we pursued a grant through the Department of Commerce last year that um, provided $250,000 in community service tax credits um, that uh, would garner, uh, that's a 50% tax credit, for garner about 500,000 in donations. And uh, there have been a number of individuals and businesses that have, have uh, stepped forward and, and asked to, to be able to, to use some of those tax credits. We do have some available left for the balance of this year, and it's kind of a first come, first serve. But in essence, if a person makes a contribution of $1,000 to, to our organization at a 50% tax credit, they get back $500 uh, against their tax liability in the state. So they can make a contribution and get half of it back on there, as long as they have a tax liability on the state side. So if, and as you said, there's not a lot of money left with this, but if somebody wants to apply for that, how do they go about it? Is there a number or office to call? Oh, they can just call our administrative office and we can either put, put the number up 625-5678, uh, gets you right to there. 
and uh, just say I'm interested in tax credits, and uh, they'll get you hooked up with the right uh, the right staff. So, so you have some grant money coming in. You have people that are donating, and again, it does take money. Um, anything else you'd like to to talk about uh, that I maybe have missed on here today from DSNWK standpoint? Well, if I could say one thing, and that is. Um, the gratefulness that we have towards all those who have stepped up that help us uh, in big ways and in small ways. Um, it, whether it's a, a large grant for repairs to roofs and putting additions on housing uh, that's so needed for accessibility purposes and just living space, required living space. Those are the kinds of big ones, but the little ones where people who will pick up the phone and call us and say, you know, I observed something that just touched my heart. Mm -hmm. And it's about the interactions and it's about the way our staff treat individuals with disabilities with absolute dignity. Um, and that's really at the heart of what we do. It's about people and it's about people serving people. And it doesn't happen though without all pieces coming and working together. And you've probably been around DSNWK for a few years. I don't know how many. I don't know if we want to tell anybody that. How, sure. how long have you been there? I started in 1991. So 91. You've seen a lot of people that are using these services really grow up is quite a bit since you yes. started. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's amazing transformation. Some of the stories that we I learned of coming into this role um, of people who came from that old model mm -hmm. of service into the new model of community services and how what might have been a very difficult arrangement turned into people who would have never been envisioned to, to be able to live independently are living independently because of the supports and the real life that all of us desire. That's got to make you and all the people that work for DSNWK pretty happy to see yeah. all that. You know, I think for our, our own personally, yes. For our staff, absolutely. It's what drives us. But for our parents and for those community members who have participated in our service, they see the real impact of lives transformed by some of the simple acts of, of care and, and uh, just providing what is just basic support for folks. Yeah. DSNWK providing some great services in our community, not just our community, I guess all the community, 18 of them, right? All over Northwest Kansas. Over. Well, thanks for joining us today, Jerry. All right, I'm glad to have been here. Thank you. Jerry Michaud, and he is, of course, with uh, his CEO of DSNWK. Want to thank him as being our guest today here on the forum. I'm Mike Kerner, and for Gary Shorman, thank you for joining us today.